two fishermen on a fishing mission from the west coast of Ireland to the east coast of England. Welcome to the Greater Rod Race. Well, we're still here at the Northamptonshire pit and uh, we're having a bit of a debate because we haven't caught one of the big fish here in the Specimen Lake. It's a fantastic day in the offing, going to be very, very warm and I think we should stay here and try and catch one of the big carp that are definitely in this lake. We've seen 25, 30, 40 pounders, just one of those fish would give us enough miles to move on. Mick, on the other hand, is kind of favouring the race really, taking the purest viewpoint that there's a lake on the complex not far away with smaller but easier to catch fish. And you think maybe we should go there, don't you? We really want to complete this race and we want to do it properly. But we're taking a gamble by trying to catch a big fish. You're really, really confident because you do a lot of this style of fishing. I don't do much of it and I'm not as confident as you. You've got a swim where there's fish coming into two feet of water over clear gravel. They were hanging around there yesterday. I know I could catch a fish there. I'd be 100% confident of that. It's a warm day, they're going to come into the shallows. How does 99% confidence carry us? Well, that makes 199% between the two of us, yeah. We're going to catch one. Earlier on in this series, you will have seen us fishing for barbel with halibut pellets. Carp love them. The only problem I've got here is that with all this weed, I'm going to need a bigger hook to make sure I can pull the carp through the weed. But if I put that little pellet on a rig with a big hook, it would be all out of balance. The carp would soon feel the weight of that hook. So I'm going to use a proper pellet. How about that? A real donkey choker. When the carp picks that up, it's barely going to feel the weight of the hook. And hopefully, it'll just prick itself like that. Here's a couple of tips. This is how I rig up with pellets. Now, it's widely accepted that the pellet should be quite close to the hook to get a good hookup. Well, every pellet's a slightly different size, so you have to make an adjustment. All I do is just wrap the hair around the hook shank until the hook bend is just touching the pellet. Another little tip I use, I don't know whether it makes any difference, but that pellet on a dark background doesn't really stand out. Now, to keep the pellet on, we use one of these little stops, one of these little boily stops. You can get them in all sorts of different colours. I choose the bright yellow one because on a dark background it stands out and it, it attracts the carp, catches its eye and it gives me confidence and it's worked in the past and that's the way I'm going to fish today. This is going to be real hook and hold stuff. I'm only about a rod length from the wheat bed. I'm going to keep the line down. I'm sorry I can't talk here. I've got the right tackle for the job. I've got 20 pound line. Oh no. Just holding it from the wheat. Oh God, it's coming. It's coming. I've set the clutch so that if it does bolt back, it hasn't really had a chance to fight yet. Sorry about this. Oh, <laughs> it's in. Well, my 99% confidence has shot up to 110, I can tell you. Ecton Lakes has come up trumps, and I've got a lovely big common here. I think it's pushing, oh, it's probably pushing 20 pounds, and we really need that to get on our way. Well, there it is. A really nice common calf. Well into double figures, just what we wanted. Well, I've zeroed the sling. I think this is high doubles. It's 15 to 17 pound, I'm guessing. Let's have a look. Well, that's not a bad guess. I'm somewhere in the middle. 16, three. That's great. Well, that was rather hectic. It all happened so quick. But that's the nature of carp fishing on these hard waters. You wait and you wait and you wait. And then all of a sudden, the action's over in just a few seconds. But in these hook and hold situations, there's no choice. 
You can't set anything up for this sort of fishing. You've got to get it away from the weed bed, in the net as quick as you can. I'm sorry you've missed some of the action, but hey, we're on our way. I did my best. Now the fish have been in the margins for a while, but they've definitely gone out now. They've moved out into the middle of the lake. And I've now rigged up to try and catch them further out. I can actually see a clear patch in amongst the weed. I've cast to it, I've marked my line, and I've recast with a method feeder and a big pellet on the hook. Now the method feeder really is just a frame that you mould a big piece of ground bait around. And that goes down by your hook bait. And as it breaks down, it releases scent into the water and it draws the carp in from far and wide. That's the theory. It's a time proven method that really works, but time is against us at the moment. So let's see what happens. Can we do it? I just don't know. Time's running out. Oh well, that's it. Well, every now and again, you come across a place that you wish you'd discovered before, one of those real hidden jewels, and that's exactly what's happened to us today. More of that in a moment from Mick, just to let you know that we did have 86 pounds of fish in our keep net. We've used up 30 miles in getting here, so we're now down to 56 pounds. Now, we're on a fantastic syndicate water here near Peterborough. It's got a lot of carp, and there's bream, there's tench, there's a lot to go for, and it looks like the perfect stalking water. What we want ideally is 40, 45, even 50 pound of fish to be safe. But we've got to remember one thing, it's a fantastic place, but we can't self-indulge. We've only got five days left, so we've got to catch the fish and unfortunately get out of here. Beautiful water this, it's really, really clear. There's a lot of weed, but there are big holes in the weed. It's just a magnificent lake. It's a stalking paradise, basically. If you're into one rod fishing for big fish, this is heaven. There's a group of very big fish out here in front of us. Fish well into the 20s, possibly the 30s, carp, of course. They're flicking the baits with their tails, with their noses but they're actually not taking them. And I think the fish are in a pre-spawning mode. They're thinking about getting ready to spawn. And when they're in that mood, they can be very, very difficult to catch. I'm flicking out single biscuits. I'm not putting loads out there because I know they won't have them. They're in a playful mood. I'm going to keep the feed to a minimum and I'm just going to put the hook bait out there and just watch these fish for a while. I might get a take quickly, but I think we're gonna have to work at this. When it's baking hot like this and the carp are on the surface, a great way to catch them is with floaters. I've drilled out here a couple of floating pellets, hair rigged them to a size eight hook. But of course, I've gotta get them out 20 yards. So the way I get the pellets out there is use what we call a controller float. This is a float with a lot of weight in and I can easily cast it out with the pellets out to where the carp are. And the great thing about it is that it's a self-hooking float. As the carp takes the bait and moves away, it offers resistance and it just starts to prick the hook into the carp's mouth. As it tries to turn and swim away, it pulls the line to this backstop here. That adds the total resistance and weight of the float. The fish is hooked, there's a big swirl, and the rod bends over, you've got one on. And the great thing is, for old people like me whose eyes aren't very good, you just look where the float is, look behind it, wait till you see a big swirl and you'll feel the fish hook itself. So I can't wait to get this out there because if any method's going to work today, this is the one. Well, I've been casting to one group of fish, but by casting twice, I've just scared them off.
Well, after a bit of a tactical switch, I'm into a fish, and the question is, will it come through this thick weed? But it was just a take that came out of the blue. I'll tell you about the tactical switch in a moment, but for the time being, I've got the small matter of trying to control a bull in a china shop here, or rather a big carp and a great big matter weed. I'm in a bit of a pickle here, Sir Michael. Did you see what happened then, Russ? I was watching it. Yeah. You heard the strike, he tucked itself, and then it was on, but it hadn't bolted away. Did you see what happened? Oh, yeah, yeah. I just felt something give then. Here it comes. He's away. Oh, he's off. <sighs> well, needless to say, I'm pretty gutted. I just got the fish moving out of the weed, one lunge, and it was gone. So, lovey. Is it done yet? No, nope. it's just pulled off. Well, there's the problem, Nick. It's, it's opened the hook out with all that pressure. Back to the drawing board. It's good fish. We needed that, didn't we? You ain't going to get many chances when it's like this. No. At least it proves they're catchable, though because we thought as they were spawning they wouldn't take the bait, but we're one step needed. We know we can catch them, but it's just hard work, really, isn't it, man? Yeah. Oh, well, never mind, mate. I'll put the kettle on again. Just when we needed a break, Matt's lost a big fish. In fact, we're not doing very well at all. In the last three days, we've only put one fish in the keep net, a 16 pounder. There's still 100 miles to go. We've only got four days to do it. It really is looking grim. This could be our toughest challenge yet. Two fishermen on a fishing mission from the west coast of Ireland to the east coast of England. Welcome to the Greater Rod Race. I never was much good at maths at school, but I've worked out a few figures that might be of interest to you. Now, since we left the west coast of Ireland, we've covered a distance of 533 miles. And on that journey, we've caught 606 pounds of fish. And that puts us with 73 pounds in the keep net at this moment in time. This means now that to reach our destination, the east coast of England at Lowestoft, we need to put a minimum of 72 pounds in the keep net. 72 pounds minimum. We've got less than seven days left to complete this challenge. Perfect, absolutely perfect. I reckon there could be as many as 20 or 30 fish in this bay. The fish are here, they're here to be caught, but I don't think we're going to catch them doing what we're doing now. <laughs> oh, it's in. Really nice common calf. That's great. I'm into a fish. Here it comes. Oh, he's off. I'll put the kettle on. It really is looking grim. Well, I'm into a fish, and I saw it cruising past just around the corner. I'd flicked a few baits in there. I noticed it took two or three. I put my hook bait on it, and it just walloped it straight off. And it looks like a decent fish. Now, we've got a bit of a problem, because Brownie's forgotten the spreader block to the landing net, so... I'm using a really soft rod here just to try and hold the fish away from the weeds. Mick's going to just try and scoop the fish in the net. A bit of a typical haze and brown scenario, this one. I'm really going to hold him hard. This is nerve-wracking stuff. It's a big carp, and I've got to just keep the brakes on it. Come on out of there, baby. Come on. Well, we've got four days to go of forecasted baking hot weather. 
ordinarily a hundred pound of fish, which is roughly what we need, wouldn't be a problem. But in this weather, it could be. Yes, he's got it. That's a result. Well done, son. Little bit unorthodox, but we've done it. <laughs> right, what do you reckon? 17. 16, 17? Yeah. I don't think you'll argue with 16, 12, 16, 11. Nice start. Yeah, very nice start there, mate. Well, that's helped the situation no end. Right, do you want to deal with the fish, mate? Yeah. Light needed. And a bit for Matt. It's a baking hot day, Mick. We've kept the fish wet, but I think we should get it back in the water. Yeah, definitely, mate. A memorable fight. That's one of the ultimate fishing experiences, that. Well, I've just had another take right out of the blue. Well, at this moment, I'm quite pleased with myself. It looks like a big fish. Not a monster. It is a good fish, too. Everyone counts at the moment. I've got to get eyes off. Well, somewhere inside there is the carp. Fish of about six pound this time. That was a big one. Aye, aye, aye. It really has become hot, muggy, and uncomfortable. But we've got to carry on fishing. We do need some weight today. And I still think there's a chance. There's fish out there moving about. There's a couple by my float now. They're just passing underneath the bait. They could quite easily just turn and take it if they wanted it. But with this style of fishing, even though you don't think you're going to get one, all of a sudden, one can change its mind and just come up and take the floating bait. We've just got to persevere, or we're never going to complete this challenge. <sighs> Another hook pull. I saw a hole in the weed, quite a good cast, and I managed to get into it quite well, actually. Hi, right, Matt. Quick, there's a pike coming after it. Oh, there is, yeah. It's going round and round with the pike, look. The pike doesn't quite know what's going on, look. <laughs> well, you think you've seen everything. Anyway, if that pike will move out of the way, you can net it for us, mate. OK, mate. <sighs> I think we... Hey, we can net the pike. Can we count that as well? Yeah. <laughs> See if we can lure him in. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, it's only a small one, but we need every pound, and I'm really pleased, cos it was a, a difficult chuck. What do you say, Matt? I'd say it's about four pound. Maybe a five? Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to mess this fish around. It's only a small one, about five pounds. I think we should put it straight back. Five pounds is near enough for me. You happy with that, Matt? Yep. This'll never work, but we are really desperate at the moment. I've seen a pike. I'm going to put a bit of silver paper on and try and tempt it. He might just mistake it for a small fish. Go beyond him and drag it past his face. Some little roach chasing your piece of silver paper. <laughs> We're trying everything now, folks. You can tell we've reached that point of desperation. What are we doing, Matt? <laughs> Come on, let's carry on carp fishing. Fish just coming in now from the left. The carp heading towards the float now. They're just pecking away at the bait. And I've just literally got to wait until the float rips across the surface. In this blazing heat, we've put 27 and 3 quarter pounds in the keep net. We're almost at our target for the day. But we're not catching carp at the moment. We're not seeing many signs of them. So, in desperation, I'm going to try and catch that pike we saw earlier. It's one of those situations, I think, where if I'm going to get it, it'll be in three casts. Fishing with a little rubber jig, I wouldn't expect to do well with pike in this hot weather. But this one is nowhere to be seen. We're not going to fail on this. We're trying everything. I'm not giving up. Oh. I tried and tried for that pike and I couldn't get it, but I'm just reeling the floater back and something has just grabbed it and it must be a pike. It can only be a pike that's come up and grabbed it. And it's, I think it's a pike. Yeah, there it is. That pike, which was a bloody nuisance, has taken my floater. Oh, brilliant. It's only a couple of pounds, but we do need this extra weight. Right, there's my floaters just in the corner of its mouth. I'm just hoping it won't bite through the hook link. I'm playing it very carefully to the net because we don't want to lose this one. I'm scared to put too much pressure on because it could easily, easily bite through a braid hook link. Here it comes. Oh, and it's in the net. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. Oh, what's going on here? <laughs> well, 
I only just got that one in the net, the hook's popped out. This is going to be very lively. Summer pike always are. I'm going to have a quick look at him and get him straight back. There he is. That's the culprit. I'm going to call that five pound, get it back. Uh, there it is. Go on, off you go. He won't make that mistake again. Well, that one was a belting tape. One minute the rud were pecking the living daylights out of the hook bait, and the next thing, a carp just literally blindsided them. There was a scattering of the rud just seconds earlier, but they erupted away from the bait. One of them cheekily came back for another go, and then the next thing you know, whack, the float went sailing across the surface, being pulled along by a, a nice carp that just came in and nicked it straight away from those rud. And this one's a a reasonable fish he's got quite a lot of weed on him and uh, he hasn't really woken up I'm hoping that Mick might be able to scoop him without too much of a kerfuffle going on it's a nice fully scaled mirror Mick this one here he comes go on brownie <laughs> yes that's a good one we're on the way to low stuff mate can you grab that mate <laughs> yeah right I've got the stick well, I've had a couple of disasters today losing fish, but this one makes up for it. It's a big fully scaled mirror and I'm really pleased, really pleased. Right, zero done. Okay. Well, I think we might have something around about 17, 18 here, Mick. I'm gonna say 19 and three quarters. It's, it's a slim fish, it's well spawned out. And normally you're looking at a fish there that'd be like 22, 23, I'd say. We're any road up, sir M. You lucky, lucky man. 20 pounds, 13. I think it'll do, Brownie. I think I might get a photograph of this one, Mick. It's a very nice looking fish, isn't it? Beautiful, yeah. Looks quite an old fish, doesn't yes, it? Yes, I think th these fish are, a lot of them. They've been in here a few years. They're not stupid. Isn't that beautiful, though? What a super fish. Look at that. Fantastic array of mirror scales it's got. Well, well done, mate. That's a beautiful fish. It is. And another £20 for the keepers. Yep, absolutely fantastic. That's, that's, the, way to, that's the way to boost the keep net up, Brownie. Yeah. Beauty. OK, boys. Thank you. <sighs> Lovely result. Right. OK, let's go and put this one back down here. Well, that's a proper old English carp, that one. It's probably lived in here for quite a few years. Maybe even as long as 20 or 30 years, you never quite know, because they do live to a good age. Look how thick it is across the back. The fish has spawned quite recently, so its normal weight would be quite a bit bigger than this, probably around 23, 24 pounds. It's a beauty. I'm delighted to have caught it. I don't know about you, Mick, but I think we've had a fantastic day on a beautiful lake and it's exceeded our wildest expectations. It has been roasting. We've boosted our weight for the day to 53 and a half pounds. And I think it's been a classic example of teamwork because while I was going for some of the bigger fish, Mick saw the opportunity to nail a couple of smaller carp and you got that bonus pike. And the end result is that 53 and a half pounds. And to be honest, I can only speak personally, I've needed it really because the last two or three days I went off like a rocket at the beginning of this challenge. I've started to flag a bit, my energy levels have dropped slightly and uh, thankfully Mick's really risen to the challenge and we're fishing great together. And you know Mick, I think if we don't do this now mate, I think it's because we'll have thrown it away. That big orange and white, well, I'm going to try and get him. Yeah. But seriously, we're just having a bit of fun here. In actual fact, we've left Peterborough. 
We've travelled 33 miles across the fens and we're now at the Pisces Country Park, which is near the village of Welney. Now this little ornamental pond belongs to the fishery owner, Mike, who's kindly allowed us to fish here, although I'm not sure after he sees us doing this whether he'll be quite as pleased. We know that there's a good mixed head of fish in the lakes, all kinds of different species, but there's only just over a couple of days left to fish in this challenge. We're very short of time, so this one has got to be a real quick hit. Right, come along, Sir Michael. I know you're almost at the age where you need a bus pass, but drive on. Another fine mesh you've got me in. Oh, turn left, Sir M. Not so fast, not so fast. I think I'm losing control. <laughs> oh, no, losing that. control. <laughs> right, good luck, mate. Ten pound and that's all we need, right? Yep. Yeah. If I can't get ten pound of fish in a few hours, well, I shouldn't be on this challenge. <laughs> well, there's a clue as to what I'm fishing for. I've got a little tiny dry fly on, and I don't know whether this is going to work, but it used to work when I was a kid. This lake apparently has got some nice rud in it, and they're usually willing surface feeders, especially when the weather is really hot. Now, fly fishing for them may or may not work, but I've made it work in the past all right, and if there are good rud in here, they probably will take a fly. If it doesn't work, then I've got my other kit back up at the camper van, I can always go up and get that, so give it a whiz first. If it doesn't work, I'll switch to something more conventional. This is a lovely little venue for relaxing and having a pleasure session, just catching what comes along. I'm going to set up a simple float and I'm going to fish alongside those reeds for rudd. I'm using five pound main line straight through to the hook. And the reason is that if I hook a carp, I don't want to lose it. I'm not worried about using heavy tackle, even though these are small fish, because these little rod are usually crazy and they'll take anything. And while I'm trying to build up this bag of 10 pound that we need, I'm just hoping that maybe a carp will put in an appearance and we'll build the bag up quicker. I'm going to use this loaded float here. It's got a three gram weight to load it so that it stands about that far out of the water. And then I'll just add shot until I pull it down until there's about that much showing to make it quite sensitive. I'm only going to set it about 18 inches deep because I can see already those rod are up on the surface. There's no need to go any deeper. I'm going to tie on a size 14 hook. Again, it's a heavy hook. It's much too heavy for this sort of fishing. But these fish won't mind. These rod, as I say, are crazy. They'll take anything. But again, if a carp comes along or a tench, it's silly to lose it in the reeds. So you want to have the hook and strong line to land it. So I'm all ready to cast out. I've got a feeling it's going to be a great session, this. I'm really going to enjoy this. Instant success. The float is sticking way too much out of the water, so I'm going to add a bit of shot. He shoots and he scores. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's lovely. Now, hopefully, although this isn't a very big fish, it will be a rud, and it is. Now, when you look at the rud, you can see that his mouth slants upwards, which means, basically, he's a surface feeding fish. They're always looking up to the surface, and that's why when a fly drops on the water or hatches from the water, it's very vulnerable to these fish. They're fish of the summer and the autumn, and they're absolutely beautiful. Rod love maggots. I'm going to put two on. Here we go. Straight away, bite first cast. Typical greedy rod, swallowed the hook, and it's going to take quite a few of those to build up the bag. This really is going to be a long haul. Well, to be honest with you, I'm not catching anything like the number of fish that Mick's catching, but I'm enjoying myself, and I can see that Mick's going to catch our 10 pounds fairly easily. He's fishing well, and the rod are coming thick and fast, and I'm just enjoying messing around on the fly. So far, I've caught 10 ounces of rod, I've caught three fish, and there's one. <laughs> Four ounces, so I've almost got a pound. Ta-da! We'll soon be there at this rate. Oh dear, let's lower the averages a bit. Well, this is a better one. If we keep catching fish of that size, it won't take long before we're up to 10 pounds. Well, what I'm trying to do with these rudd is match the hatch. In other words, I'm looking at the insect life in the lake, both the subaquatic life and the flies that drop on the surface. And I'm trying to match that with my fly, and it is actually quite difficult to work it out in one short session. 
This is a lot more challenging and it's not the sort of thing that we could do ordinarily unless there were so many active feeding fish on mixed bait, but there are. And really, the fact that Mick is catching so many fish has allowed me to have, well, to be honest, a lot of fun. Well, that's a great bonus, that is. That's a lovely big perch. Look at that. <laughs> I wasn't really expecting that. And it's a good job that I put that heavy line on because that perch just went plowing off through the reeds and with a lighter hook link I would have been snapped straight off. All right, there's the little hook. It's only a small hook but it's a strong one. You don't need good eyes to see that I've changed my float. I suddenly realised that I didn't really need that heavy float. I thought I'd be casting a bit further but I'm only casting a very, very short distance so I'll put on something much more sensitive. I've also reduced my depth to about 10 inches because I can see these rod are taking the maggots almost instantly. There's no shot on the line at all and I'm actually sometimes seeing the rod actually take the maggots just as they hit the surface. I've got a nice sensitive setup now, really bagging up. Right, well I'm going to show you the flies that I've caught on now. This one's been quite successful. It's a small fly with a glass bead. It fishes just under the surface film. And basically this one imitates a Carixa or water boatman. Now this one's got some long fibres to represent the paddles and it's also got that glass bead body which represents the air bubble that keeps the insect afloat on the surface. That one's worked. And then we've got a classic dry fly here. This one's a little tiny wolf. And this one represents a Canis which is a very common fly. It hatches throughout the year. It's a pale coloured thing, almost white but the rudder just think it's a really big canis. And that's worked really well too. Well, this is another fly which works right in the surface film. It's not strictly a dry, it represents an emerging insect. It's called a gold ribbed hare's ear and it's probably the most popular fly in fly fishing. It's got a straggly body made from hare's mask fur. It's got a gold rib that looks like the segments of a nymph. It doesn't look like any particular nymph but it looks like an awful lot of them, if you know what I mean, Mr. Frodo. Well, that was an absolutely rip-roaring bite. I've just switched to a little tiny pheasant tail nymph. And um, I've got a lovely roach here. Look at that. And it just goes to show how important the fly choice is because I tried another little hot-headed nymph. Fish didn't want to know, but I changed to this one and the fish absolutely mullered it. That's a beautiful fish. It's a roach. It weighs about probably 12 ounces and boosts my total to two pounds. And it absolutely hammered the nymph. It's a lovely fish, that. Well, I'll put him back, and there's the nymph. It's a little pheasant tail with a tiny little pearlescent back. And I spent a long time choosing that fly, and I'm glad I did because that was a belting fish to catch on a fly out of a little pond. Well, as it's getting dark, the better fish are coming now. Typical of rod. The bigger fish wait till dark. Look at that one. Ooh, what a belter. It must be nearly half a pound, that one. Let me give you a big pat on the back, Sren, because I think you fished very well today. Scores on the doors. Well, uh, before this catch, we've got 76 pounds in our keep net. We've got 115 miles to go. Time's running short, but uh, I think we've got what we want. I'm optimistic, so weigh them in, son. Oh, music to my ears. A little bit of a escape. Try and get them across to the middle. Nice, nice close to what we want there. Oh, I think so. Look at that one. Great big perch. Look at that Oh, lovely, mate. Lovely jubbly. I shall adjudicate. I know you normally do it, but it's going to be me this time. Well, let me tell you, Mick, you've got an 11 and a half pound bag of fish here. 
Not bad for an old pike, eh? I've got two pounds, that's 13 and a half, plus the 76 we already had, that makes 89 and a half pounds of fish. There's about 115 miles to go, so we're in good shape. Time's running short, we've got to go to Lenway tomorrow to fish for tench in boiling hot weather. But let me tell you, that finishing line is drawing a lot closer. Well, we might be getting that ice cream at the seaside, yeah. Two fishermen on a fishing mission from the west coast of Ireland to the east coast of England. Welcome to the Greater Rod Race. But as you're going to see now, we really are two fishermen living in a very tiny camper van. And apart from having to catch the fish, which has been hard enough, we really do have to do washing, cooking and cleaning. As you can see, the whole place is a shrine to fishing. And um, I, I don't know how we actually get in here. This is where Mick sleeps up here. He's got his little Punch and Judy show curtains. That's full of fishing tackle at the moment. This is another area just crammed with fishing tackle. It's everywhere. It's inside this cupboard. This is my bed and it's covered in, yep, you've guessed it, fishing tackle. I sleep here. I've got bait above me. We've crammed that into every nook and cranny that we can actually think of. And of course, it doesn't leave us any room to sit down and relax. But we're not complaining. We've got this far. We're still talking to each other. And one thing's for sure, folks, you will see a conclusion to the whole challenge in this episode. We've got less than two days to make it. We've only got 10 to 20 pounds of fish to catch. Will we succeed? Will we fail? Well, I wish we hadn't got a heat wave because ordinarily I think it'd be a gimme, but it ain't. Anyway, we must press on. We've got pants to wash, sinks to clean. It's gonna be a busy day. To reach our destination, we need to put 72 pound in the keep nest. It is a good fish. Everyone counts at the moment. Oh, he's off. Fish of about six pounds. This will never work. I think it's a pike. It is. Go on, off you go. Right, here he comes. Yes. It's a big, fully scaled mirror. Beauty. I shouldn't be on this challenge. Music to my ears, sir. Lovely jubbly. We might be getting that ice cream at the seaside, yeah. On our onward journey from Welney to our final destination on the east coast of England, we've moved on another 43 miles and we've stumbled upon this wonderful Norfolk Estate Lake where we've been given permission to fish. Now we've got 47 miles left in the keep net or 47 pounds of fish and we've come here specifically to fish for tench. It's a classic tench lake, beautiful water around about nine acres. The water's clear and weedy, it's boiling hot, it's not the best tench conditions but we're hoping as the day starts to cool down we'll nail a few. Well, I'm just making up the ground bait mix for myself and Mick, and this is a real cracker, this one. I've added half a bottle of strawberry liquid additive. It smells great. If I was a tench, I'd wolf this lot down. I'm fishing for tench now, like I've always done for many, many years. It's a very simple float setup, just set to the exact depth of the swim, piece of sweet corn on the hook. But Matt's on the pole, and with the pole, you can get a much, much better bait presentation. I'm into a tench, Matt. Well done, Brownie. It's never a big bite from a tench, is it? It's just a little bite. There it comes. Yes. Oh, lovely. Well, we're off the mark at last. These fish should be back in the water as quick as possible. So this one, I should say about two and a half pounds. It's a male fish, as you can see by its large anal fins and these protruding muscles here. It's a hot day. I'm going to get this one straight back. I'll tell you what, Mick, I just had the tiniest bite you can imagine there. It's not a tench at all. That's a hybrid. It's a hybrid, isn't it? Yeah. It's our old friend, the Roach Bream Hybrid, and we haven't seen these since we were last in Ireland. 
Well, this one weighs about one and a half pounds, and it's a very nice fish, actually. That boosts our weight for the day up to about four pounds. Well, what we're experiencing today is the scourge of the summer tench fisher, and it's a typical scenario on lots of tench lakes. Early in the season, when the tench first wake up from their winter hibernation, they're pretty easy to catch. They're hungry, there's not much natural food in the lake, so they'll attack fairly big baits with gusto. But as the season wears on, they become preoccupied with feeding on tiny food items. Now, what also happens is not only do they become more picky about what they'll pick up, but the bites get harder and harder to hit. Those wonderful sailaways you get in the early season are replaced by tiny little lifts and dips on the float, and you've got to have really good reactions to hit them. So this is a fairly typical scenario that we're experiencing today. Lots of activity in the swim, but not many proper bites. It's interesting how the swim goes through dead periods making nick, you know, mm. the fish seem to disappear for a while. Yeah, I'm, I'm into one. Well, what I can tell by the fizzing in the swim, it's just erupted. Yeah. <laughs> well, as Matt was just saying, the bites at this time of year could be ever so tiny, and I've dotted my float down till I can barely see it. And the bite was so gentle, all it did was pull the float down just level with the water. Here it is, wearing a weed necklace as tench often do. Another small one, about two and a half pound again. Looks like that one's been bitten by a pike a couple of times. Big pike really do like tench to eat. Well, it's almost as if something's just kick-started the swim because no sooner had Mick put his fish down on the mat than my float just gave a little dip and I found myself into a fish as well. But this one's not fighting really hard. It's, it's more bream-like than tench-like, I think. It's a tench, Matt. Oh, it is a tench. It's amazing. Mick had a fantastic fight. Mine's been quite gentle, actually, and <laughs> a bit of a stroll down the town, really. <laughs> Thank you very much. Do you want to take it to the there? mat? Oh, I can do or it. Or can you lift it? Yeah, I can lift it. Good man. Nice tench. So that one might be about three pound, Mick. We'll give that one three, yeah. But there's no pattern, really, as to what they're taking. No, it, as long as it's a small bait. There you go. OK, straight back. Well. That was a real hectic period, Brownie, and I'm just going to try and work this out. We had four and a half pound, you had a two and a half pound, that's seven, that was yeah. three, that's ten. Ten, yeah. Yeah, yeah we're doing all right. Mm. And he's in again. It was actually just as the bait touched down, mate. Yeah. It's not a bad rud, it's a beautiful fish. It's probably about half a pound. Lovely golden scales, red fins. Classic upturned mouth, all mark of a nice rod. We haven't really worked out a pattern yet. No. Well, these are soft hooker pellets. The pellets that we're actually feeding into the swim are hard. On the pole, you can lower the hook bait in so the soft pellets won't come off. Once again, the teeniest of bites. Oh, this one's going to boost the bag a bit. Look at that one, Matt. Another male fish, a bit bigger for me this time. That's a good three pound, that one. And we'll finish the day on target. There you go, Nick. Well, the float's just dipped away again, and I'm into another fish. A little bit lower light, and I think the fish have responded well to it. It's a male tench. It's got those great big fins, and when it gets its head down, it's got loads and loads of power. That's a lovely fish. Again, about three pounds, and that's going to boost the weight for today up to 13. Well, we're in the closing stages of this challenge now, and today we've set the target to 20 pounds. We're on 13 pounds. I've got a feeling if we really work at it, we're going to do this. Oh, there you go, Mick. <laughs> oh, look at the elastic. That took on the drop, there, didn't it? Yeah, it did actually, and I expected it to be a small rudder or something, but it's not a bad fish, you know. I don't know what it is, but it feels all right. We have a mystery fish, mm. folks. What is it? Well, it's a tench, mate. Well, well. Here he comes. Yes. Well, Sir Michael, I don't know how big that fish is. We only want four pounds. It's a two pounder, mate. Two and a half. So, so we still want another one. We do want one more. Okay. Look at that, mate. Look at the colours on the fish. It's a really deep, rich green, just like a freshly mowed lawn. Back you go, baby. Well, one more to go. Well, that's it, Sir Michael. I can take no more. No more Mr Nice Guy. I am going to catch two pounds of rudd.
We've still got time. We can still do it. Here we go. Right, I'm into that next one. Well done, Sir Michael. That's the spirit. This is the only way we're going to get to this destination. And I'm into mine. Well, would you believe it, Sir Michael? Oh, I've just put on two maggots and I think I've hooked a tench. <laughs> <laughs> well, well. It's ridiculous. I'm blinking. Oh, I'm telling you, mate, it's a good one as well. Here we go. Yes, it, it is. is. It's a good tench. And savour the moment as the final tench. Yes. Yes. Well, there you go, Sir M. Four pound in anybody's book. That takes the tally for today to 22 pounds of tench. We've got one day left to go in this challenge. One venue left, or at least we hope so. It's a river, it's weedy. There aren't that many fish in it, but we think we need somewhere between three and five pounds to get us to low stop. It sounds achievable, it is, but let me tell you, tomorrow is forecast thunderstorms. Let's just hope it all goes our way. That was a good day's work. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. Better than I expected, actually. Much better than I expected. Are you sick of this camper van? A little bit. <laughs> I'm absolutely sick of it. Well, here we are on the final day of our challenge and by nightfall we've got to get to Lowestoft. At the moment we're at Taverham on the River Wensum. It's in perfect summer condition, it's low, it's clear, it looks fabulous. We've got to catch chub and I think Mick you're going to tell us a little bit more about that. At this point in the challenge we've actually amassed a grand total of 678 pounds of fish. To get to our final destination we think we'll need three to five pounds but we certainly don't want to get there and find we're short, so I think we should go just a little bit over that. Now, with the amount of weed in the river, we may be able to catch chub by lowering baits into the holes in the weed, but I think our best option is to try and fish for these fish with floating baits. This is a real spectacular finale if we pull it off, because let me tell you, catching a chub off the surface in summer is the cream of fishing. They're making big bow weights because it's very shallow. They're not proper ones. These are. Pretty clean. The, the weed extends up to the edge of the tree. We're ready to fish now. We've wrecked the river. We've identified two or three spots with some nice chub in them. We've been feeding the fish as well on floating baits and Mick's now ready to start. Now, this is fishing in its simplest form. He's got a hook, a line, and a big piece of crust. There's no shots on there or floats or anything else. This is classic free lining, and it's fishing in its purest form. Let's just hope a big chub takes this bait. Yeah, yeah. you got him. Oh! That's one. Yeah. Have you got him? No, no. It I, was. I don't think it was on. This, this is turning into a nightmare. It's tightening its shot across then. Do you know this really could be our toughest challenge yet? So close and yet so far. We've got to get these chub. The end of the challenge is hours away and we haven't done it. I thought maybe we could do it fairly quick and have a bit of fun catching one or two more. Got this one, yeah. Good lad, got it. How about that? Well done, Brownie. <laughs> hey. Oh, hang on, it's not in the net yet. It's not Doesn't a big matter. one, I don't think. Well, but... I don't care. Did the trick though. That was a nice shot. It's a small one, mate. That's well, not going to get us set. It's all right. Don't worry about it. That Let's won't get, get us set. It's over a pound. <sighs> to start. There, I did. It's a pound. Well, we at got least. one. At least a pound. Yeah, we we'll call it a pound, shall we? Yeah, it's a beautiful chub. It's absolutely yeah. mint. Look at that. It's just edged in grey and black. It's almost etched. Well, that bite was much bolder than the other bites I missed. OK, well, that, that's a pound, OK? Yeah, certainly a pound. Can't afford to risk it, Mick. I think we've got to leave here with at least five or six pound. I really do. Yeah. Never been so desperate for a bite. I'm in. 
Well, this could be it. This feels like a decent fish. It's a good chub. I can see it. If I can just get Mick into net it. Come see it, mate. It's OK, good. mate, don't miss it. Are you coming, kicker? Go yes, yeah. got her. <laughs> We've done it. I've never been so relieved in all my life to catch a chub. Let's come back from the water's edge and have a look at this fish. Yeah, it's, about, it's about three and a half pounds. Oh. And we, we set ourselves a target of five pounds, so we're now at four and a half pounds, so we're that close. Beautiful. And when it happens, it happens so quickly and so confidently. Isn't that beautiful? Mm. Well, that leaves us, frustratingly, maybe half a pound to a pound short, but I think we can do it now. We'll go for small chub. I could try the fly. There are fish taking flies. Mick can try small bits of bread. Let's get this fish back and get this job finished. Well done, mate. We're really close now. Really, really close. Talk about taking it to the wire. Well, the sun's going down. We're running out of time. We've decided to give it one last go in this swim. We've probably got enough, but one more fish would, well, hopefully secure it. Even that wouldn't be 100%, but it would make us a lot more comfortable. If we can't catch a fish here, we're gonna have to go anyway because we've run out of time. Well, sadly, I didn't catch another fish. And the situation is this, the sun's going down behind me. We've got to be in low stuff before midnight, so we've got to go right now. Now, at the moment, we've got 36 pounds of fish in the keep net. We think it's 35 miles to low stuff, but we're not exactly sure. We're going to set the tripometer, and when we hit 36, we've got to stop wherever we are. I just hope and pray that it's low stuffed. Now we think we've got enough fish to get to our journey's end. All the way through, we found in this challenge that our mileage calculations have been slightly out. We might do it, but it's very chancy. Well, this is really exciting. We're driving down towards low stop docks now, and the tripometer is showing just over 33.5 miles. I think we're going to do it. I'm just getting anxious now. Well, here we are at Lowestoft Docks. The tripometer says exactly 34 miles, and we've done it. We've made it with just an hour to spare. How do you feel? Well, obviously, I'm really excited and pleased that we've completed the challenge, but, you know, when we started out, I knew it was going to be difficult, but I didn't realise how difficult. Are you ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one. Yeah! yeah! Now, you've probably gathered by now that we've done the challenge because the challenge was quite simple. We wanted to travel from Killary on the west coast of Ireland all the way here to Lowestoft on the east coast of England. But there was a catch. To travel one mile, we had to catch a pound of fish, and it was an epic journey made in a camper van. In all, we caught 682.5 pounds of fish. We travelled 680.5 miles, so we made it with two pounds to spare and we had 30 days to complete the journey. We sneaked in by just one hour. It was a fantastic adventure and here are some of the best bits. We started at Killary on the west coast of Ireland. Where did you buy an ice cream? Oh, I'm proud to be your fishing partner. Come out. It is an eel. Oh, no. It'll get a lot worse than this. Fantastic. We're off the mark. We went all the way through Connemara. It's not a monster. Oh, you've done well, mate. 18, 18, and, 18, and, 18 and a half. We're well on the road, sir. Yeah. And then down through the centre of Ireland. You probably think I'm crazy. This is absolutely nuts. <laughs> Such a horrible day, actually. We're fishing for miles, so we've got to catch something. We've been literally blown off the water. Oh, I'm into one at last. 
going to need quite a few of these to build up a good weight. A few more miles. Really hard <laughs> scraping the bottom. <laughs> we, we are, mate. Now, that one's a Roach Bream hybrid. Right, let's see what we've got. 20 pounds and three ounces. And through Loch Country. We're just coming out onto the loch now. We've got a big rolling wave, but we're going to give it a shot anyway. Well, I've actually caught my first fish. Hey. Look at those spots. All the way into Dublin. Well, this is it. It's crunch time. We've now moved on from Loch Lacken. You're going to have to fish till the cows come home. A lot of fish. Hey, that's great. Let's go and weigh mats. That's a lot of hard work. <laughs> We've done this with it. Well done, mate. <laughs> The Greater Rod Race really was an epic adventure, in my opinion, and there will be those people watching it who think, well, getting from west to east, couldn't we have done it a different way? We could have done it quicker, couldn't we? Of course we could. We could have gone to commercial fisheries. We could have done it in half the time, but we really wanted to push ourselves a little bit and challenge ourselves and, and really show the true spirit of, of fishing, and I think we've achieved that, Matt. Yeah, I mean, we really wanted to show lots of different fishing methods. We also wanted to go on a tour of Ireland and the British Isles that showed you a wide variety of venues and lots of different types of fishing. So we think we succeeded in that pretty well, and uh, just to back that up, here's another really good bit from the series. Well, this is it, we're on the way. We've crossed the Irish Sea and we're actually very near to the town of Hollyhead in Anglesey. That'll get him going. He's taking the bait. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> gotcha. Not a monster fish, but it's a really, really good start. Yeah! <laughs> now we're cooking on gas. We went into Wales through Anglesey. To here at the Menai Bridge. That's my first ever still water barbel. Probably getting on for a pound. Look at that one. You've got 62 pounds. Good. <laughs> We've worked down now. Yeah. <laughs> then up the Dee Valley, into the Midlands, through Shropshire. If only they knew, we can't fish for toffee. Oh, ho, ho. Yeah, I mean, three pounds is not going to be far out. Come on. Oh, ho. There you go, Mick. I'm going to call it a four pounder. There's a bite, Mick. This feels more like a chub. They all count towards our weight. Don't miss it, Mike. Yes! <laughs> yeah, out the other side, all the way across the centre of England, through Northampton. Nice bit of pace here, isn't it? Mmm. Oh, the bite at last. There it is. It's almost a fisher cast. Well, this is almost too easy. Ultimately, onto the east and, of course, here in Lowestock. A lot of venues fished. Can you guess how many? Two dozen as a rough guess. Well, actually, you're very That'd be close. My guess. Yeah, very close. In total, we fished no less than 28 different venues. We've got a nice barbel on here, mate. Yes! Absolutely fabulous way to end the fishing. We got one. Well, folks, that's just about all we've got time for. It's been a fantastic adventure that's seen us travel from the west coast of Ireland to the east coast of England. We made it with just one hour to spare, and here we are just enjoying and basking in the glory of our success. So until next time, see ya.